he mostly of uh, all his birds and animals in his local area. Uh, I assume it's mainly from Norway. So let's hear, uh, let's welcome Philip and hear from him about his photography journey. Hi, Philip. Hello. Hi. Thanks for, thank you for uh, inviting me. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Yeah. So let's let's begin with how you started photography, how you started getting to wildlife photography and all these things. If you can yeah, give a small so, introduction. Yeah. Uh, as you mentioned in the introduction, I got um, interested in phot photography about when I was 14, 15 years of age. And and I, and at those times it was uh, with a, a film. Um, I shot with uh, both negative and positive uh, films. Um, after a while, I got my hands on digital cameras, um, and oft often took pictures of uh, you know uh, uh, regular objects and and uh, uh, everyday life. Um, not so much wildlife at in the beginning. Um, after a while, I, uh, I also brought my camera on, uh, uh, on a lot of fishing trips. Uh, I, I am a avid fly fisherman, and in those days, we, we often combined fly fishing and photography and, and did a little bit of that. Um, and so uh, after a while, I, when I was uh, uh, graduating, uh, I went uh, to work as a journalist in a local newspaper. And then photography became a part of the job. Uh, I was, uh, we were the kind of journalist that also took uh, our own pictures. So uh, for um, <clears throat> about seven or eight years, I uh, worked as a uh, combined photographer and, and uh, journalist in the newspaper. And then when it became a job to take pictures, it wasn't, uh, I wasn't that keen on having it as a hobby. Uh, in addition okay. to it, so so uh, my photography uh, was was work only, and uh, in my spare time I did other other things. Uh, now yeah. uh, I'm I'm still working in a newspaper, uh, a, a bit bigger one, uh, in a regional newspaper, and my regular job there is uh, 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 front end developer uh, for for um, for other journalists. So when they make uh, presentations or articles that needs a bit of uh, more uh, presentation to it. Uh, I, uh, I code uh, and, and help with that. And also I work as a, a producer when we do web TV and uh, streaming and, and such. So, so now I'm more on, on the technical side of things. And uh, that has uh, lent me to, to uh, to do photography as a hobby again. So yeah. um, for the past uh, three years, approximately, I've um, I, I I've begin big begin begin to to uh, appreciate uh, being outside with my camera again, and yeah. uh, I will uh, take you through some of my uh, images I have made uh, these past uh, two three years. Definitely. And I, I have uh, divided in into to uh, uh, seasons of the year. So um, okay. as you know, here in Norway, we have uh, different weather for different <laughs> uh, time of year. And um, yeah. so, so I will begin with um, a bit of the uh, winter images and going through the year as we as we go, go along. And please feel free, free to, to, to ask any questions. Um, uh, any, any time, sure. and I will uh, answer. Yeah. Um, so um, to begin with, I I um, often just went outside, uh, strolling around with with a camera in my hands. And what I quickly learned was that um, wildlife doesn't appear in front of you <laughs> that often. Mm -hmm. So, so what I quickly uh, learned was to stay and hide, uh, camouflage yourself, uh, spend a lot of time in the field is often the secret to, to getting 
the kind of images I personally want. Okay. Uh, so, so this is my in my typical situation, um, uh, hiding inside a pop-up tent or renting a height, or uh, and I also have built my own height. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so uh, I, I think that is a that's a good way to uh, get close to wildlife, and um, uh, yeah, yeah, and for some species, you are definitely uh, need to stay hidden to, for them to 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 appear in front of you. Yeah. Um, for those who are not that familiar with the geography, I will just point out on the map where I'm lo located. So it's the weather, very southwest part of Norway. And this is a kind of area where we have, uh, we have uh, mountains, we have fjords, we have forests, uh, we have uh, sandy beaches. So it's a very diverse area with a lot of wildlife. Um, not that uh, high numbers of especially predators uh, that uh, I wish we had. Uh, we are uh, a bit keen on hunting on them, and that's a that's a topic for another discussion. But uh, <laughs> I'm very lucky that that we have a, a variety of wildlife where we are. Um, and so Norway is often, of course, associated with uh, cold weather and. Uh, I'm in the southern parts. We are typically having a milder and milder, milder, milder uh, winter every year, um, mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes we do get do get a bit of snow. Um, I will show you uh, some uh, pictures uh, of the winter season in Norway, and one of my very favorite animals uh, during the whole year is the red squirrel. Um, those are very fun to watch. Uh, they are uh, kind of an easy uh, species to work with. They can uh -huh. be very persistent in uh, getting their way. Uh, you can, uh, I, I work very lot with, with the squirrels this uh, summer and uh, uh, they're not afraid of you in, in any way. So, so you can uh, go out of your hide and uh, putting on food for them and they are just close by your feet and um, so they're a, a bit of easy um, species to work with um, if you put a nut uh, almost anywhere they will find it and they they, they don't give up until they have gotten it um, mm -hmm. and, and this is a picture uh, I made um, uh, in a very I guess it's become a very popular place because of uh, uh, television series you you've probably seen on BBC and uh, and, and uh, it's a place in the Norway called uh, Telemark uh, okay. and um, a very talented photographer uh, rents out uh, heights for uh, golden eagles. Uh, so, so BBC had uh, have spent months and months uh, on that location, uh, gathering footage for the, some of their biggest documentaries. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, this place is also, of course, uh, attracting photographers from around the world uh, because of the uh, the amazing uh, scenery that uh, Jules Stein, who, who runs the place, um, have, um, have there. So uh, on the, the one height, you get uh, smaller birds and squirrels like this. Um, and um, yeah, so it's a very beautiful place to stay and photograph. And I will, I will show you some pictures of the eagles uh, in a bit. Yeah. Um, and also uh, in, uh, you have the, the animals, of course, and also you have uh, the typical birds like the, the raven. Uh, yeah. One of my my favorite birds, very clever bird, and um, and also you have to be very silent and, and still to to, um, to to get near near it. Uh, here is from another height uh, in a very southern part of Norway, and I was lucky to uh, to get it in a really uh, snowy condition. Um, so and and that's what I. Uh, strive to uh, with the pictures is to um, 
yeah, show a bit of the scenery. Uh, if you have bad weather, that can be uh, that can make it good for a photograph. Um, um, but it also means, of course, uh, spending, <laughs> getting cold and and wet and and staying outside yeah. for, uh, yeah, yeah. In, in bad weather. Um, uh, again, the raven. Uh, it's a truly stunning bird when you get it up close, and they have uh, they have a language uh, in between them. Uh, they make a variety of noises, and it's uh, very very nice to to. Um, to, to spend time with them. Um, in every photograph I, I uh, share with you here, I've, I've written the settings on the um, and the metadata in, in the bottom corner, so you can see what settings I've used. Um, also, uh, we uh, we do have smaller birds and, and garden birds, uh, of course. Um, I did. Uh, I did. Uh, I was lucky to to have a bunch of goldfinches around uh, my my apartment uh, this winter, uh, and spend a lot of time with them. Uh, yeah, just putting out food for them and and feeding them. So they were quite used to uh, used to me, and and uh, I I could just go at my go at my front door and. There was uh, 10, 15 almost uh, every day uh, of these uh, beautiful birds. Um, and during a, a snowy day in the in the winter, I got some uh, fight scenes uh, of them um, showing off, and uh, they are not not nice to each other. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> And this this is the kind of conditions that the, the, that I really like to photograph in. Uh, you get a bit of the elements uh, in the picture yeah. as well. Hmm. Um, of course, uh, using a high high shutter speed uh, uh, is required. And uh, but again, the the snow helps with the light in the scene. So you 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 don't uh, need very uh, harsh sunlight to to be able to achieve the uh, the, the okay. shutter speed, um, and uh, but of course you have to nail the focus. And uh, I think in this shot I just uh, used manual focus because I put the food in a very uh, small area, so they yeah. um, they tend to stay around the, the food and uh, and uh, fighting about who should get it. Yeah. Um, Another favorite bird of mine is the Eurasian jay, uh, which is uh, a very, very uh, beautiful bird. In the, has, has a beautiful blue feather on the on the wing, and um, uh, yeah, against the snow, it really stands out. Uh, so yeah. I've um, um, and and it's also a kind of bird that uh, you have to stay hidden, I think, to be able to to get it real close. Uh, so this is from uh, from a friend of mine in the, um, in, the, in the southern parts of Norway uh, who runs a hide uh, for Eurasian jays and for sparrowhawk and for golden eagles. And speaking of the golden eagle, uh, my first image of one is uh, is this one. Um, oh. I was uh, I was renting the hide for my friend and uh, was uh, all alone. In, in the height, he usually have around four to five visitors uh, during each uh, each day. Uh, but this uh, this time, uh, I was uh, completely uh, alone in the height, and um, I, I've never been on Golden Eagle photography before. And uh, so, it, uh, when it landed, <laughs> I was kind of in a uh, in a shock uh, with this eagle uh, in yeah six, seven meters in front of me. And it stayed there in, uh, yeah, for three, four minutes, just about as the sun was, uh, you can see the golden background there. That's the morning sun hitting some uh, some uh, leaves in the background and, and golden trees, uh, making a really uh, nice scenery around it. Uh, um, and also getting eye contact with the eagle uh, is uh, some, something really special. Um, and of course, I was uh, I was intrigued to uh, to um, 
continue with the Golden Eagles, and uh, and I've uh, been to um, the one place in Telmark I, I mentioned several times. Um, this is from my last trip uh, when a young golden eagle has uh, found a prey and is uh, just outside the frame. I think there was a, a couple of magpies and, and uh, crows that are also trying to, 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 uh, yeah, to uh, chase away the, the eagle. But when he flaps his wings and uh, show his size, it's, uh, uh, it's no doubt uh, who's the boss on the on the mountain. Um, this is kind of uh, scenery that uh, that uh, you get in the uh, the mountains. Uh, you can see um, it's a valley uh, running uh, in the background there, and the fog is uh, laying uh, yeah on, on the bottom of that valley. Um, and we was lucky. We were lucky to to have uh, several eagles uh, this time to 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 get and come in, uh, and sometimes you you get uh, these uh, majestic uh, fight scenes: uh, two golden eagles clashing into uh, two uh, to each other. Um, uh, Philip, yeah. uh, we have a question in between. Yeah. <clears throat> Does the head photography change the behavior of the birds? Well, I think uh, maybe it, it is can it can be two answers to that question. I think uh, when inside a height, you get to see the natural behavior of the animals or birds because they don't know you're there. Yeah. So I don't think, and especially for golden eagles, if you uh, the way that it works with golden eagles, you have to go inside the height when it's dark. Yeah. You have to be really still, not make any sudden movement with your lens, and you have to wait until it's dark again before you go outside. outside. If they uh, suspect there is any people around, they will not okay. come, come, come down. And uh, So I think for, for golden eagles and birds of prey uh, in particular, uh, you, you get uh, as, as true as uh, natural behavior as possible. Okay. Uh, but, of, but of course, uh, you you uh, I, I, I think uh, um, by putting out food and um, that is also, of course, a topic for the discussion. Some agree with it, some doesn't agree. Um, okay. And um, but in my view, it's kind of if you do it so sparse, sparsely that they don't become dependent on your food supply. Okay. I think I think it's just a help for the birds to to get through a rough season. Uh, these yeah. uh, golden eagles, uh, they they hunt for uh, for uh, yeah other prey uh, like foxes, hares, uh, and stuff like that. And if mm -hmm. it's uh, if it's a difficult time for them, uh, this is of course uh, their most vulnerable season uh, when it's a lot of snow in the winter. Okay. So by by putting out uh, putting out food, I think you are able to help them a bit through the the most difficult times. Um, okay. But I also agree with uh, that you shouldn't uh, uh, feed animals and make them become dependent on you. Yeah. Um, but that said, um, we do feed our garden birds. We feed our somewhat bigger birds mm -hmm. and of course uh, this is also a bit of the same you feed uh, you feed birds of prey and uh, but you use uh, wild animals so the the uh, the uh, food that is put out for for the eagles is uh, uh, is foxes from that area uh, that okay. has been uh, so so there's a, uh, there's farming going on and uh, often uh, foxes are uh, being hunted on to to spare the the population of sheep and so on, so so uh, so it's they they get of course natural food uh, that they would have found anyway. Uh, so uh, yeah, but it's an interesting discussion, uh, of course. And um, but I think uh, you have to have an, a lot of knowledge for the animal, 
uh, you have to uh, do things right. And, um, and of course, uh, with bringing photographers into a place like this, you, I think you also get an awareness of how beautiful and yeah. special these birds are. And we have to uh, really take care of, care of them. Uh, yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And that has brought me to the next, uh, the next time of year, which is uh, spring. And that's, of course, uh, uh, the, the winter can be a, uh, a bit slow, of course. Uh, we have uh, migrational birds, and a lot of them are fleeing the country uh, uh, during the winter. And spring comes, and one of the uh, fascinating uh, shows of na nature we have is the black grouse in the, in the mountains. So I've been on a couple of uh, black grouse uh, lakes, as uh, they're called. And, uh, what is happening is um, the males that you see here um, is coming down on on a patch of uh, marsh or a flat surface uh, that is called uh, the lake site, and that is where they they compete uh, for the for the female. So mm -hmm. the the strongest birds wins, um, oh. um, and and these guys are uh, really. Uh, fun to watch they make a lot of noise they they call out for the female they uh and they are um coming in quite early as you maybe see on the uh on the iso speed i'm i'm about twelve thousand eight hundred on the 2.9 2.8 lens uh so this uh, this starts very early so you you um Put yourself in a in a tent uh, the night before, and you set your alarm clock to three, maybe four a.m. Uh, yeah. And uh, the sh the show starts uh, just when it starts to, to 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 lighten up. And they can play for yeah uh, everything between a couple of hours to three or four hours, and then it's. Uh, as the morning comes, they they stop and they fly into the into the woods again. Um, this is a shot of two males uh, barking into each, each other on a frozen uh, frozen marsh, um, and it can be uh, sometimes bloody. Uh, they they really go at, at it uh, at, uh, with each other, and uh, yeah. And th this is a kind of uh, activity that's mostly, uh, yeah, from April to, uh, yeah, April and May is the prime prime time for, for these birds. Um, here's another scene from, uh, from a snowy mountain. Um, and as the morning sun uh, sets in, you get the, uh, a beautiful golden light in the in the in the scenery. That's beautiful. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so so and, and such beautiful birds as well. And uh, I sadly doesn't have any good pictures of the female. Uh, but uh, if the female arrives, um, yeah, things can get get quite busy. Uh, so so the the <laughs> the biggest birds wins and gets to to mate with the female. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to to see that next year. Uh, again, yeah. some some uh, fighting males, uh, and they they uh, scrape the snow and they d do a sort of a dance around each other. And I think they measure themselves. Uh, they stretch their necks and uh, and uh, fluff their feathers and uh, yeah, try to make mm -hmm. themselves as big as possible. Uh, so, so the black grouse lake uh, is something that's uh, really f fun and can also be done as a family activity. Uh, uh, I've known, I know people that bring their kids along to it. Uh, you can s sleep outside in the tent and just uh, lay there watching them uh, for a couple of hours, uh, and uh, it's a really fun activity to 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 witness. Yeah. Uh, and a very special sound they make. So they uh, they have a very distinctive calls. Uh, uh, yeah. So you can uh, 
really have a good time uh, so watching them. Okay. Um, where I live, it's also, uh, uh, as you may know, the, the, the white-throated uh, dipper is the national bird of Norway. So I, I, I had to bring, uh, bring some images of the, the dipper in the, the presentation. And it's a really tough bird. Um, uh, it stays there all year. Uh, and in freezing, uh, freezing waters, it dives down and collects uh, and hunts for yeah, um, insects uh, under the water. Um, uh, and it's a great swimmer. It, it's, it flies uh, uh, beneath the water. And, and it's, yeah, it can. Uh, tackles very strong currents and, and nests in the most um, inaccessible areas, uh, maybe behind the waterfall, or uh, they often build their nests so that uh, other predators can't reach them. So it's a really tough bird. And uh, um, it's very, uh, yeah. I also like the the subtleness of the the black and the white, and almost looks like a you have the it has a black and yeah black yeah. suit and a white shirt, <laughs> um, and it's a really quick bird. So um, <clears throat> often they they uh, are using uh, the area around the the nest just as a landing spot, and they they fly up and down the river uh, to to collect food. And they uh, they fly uh, um, up and down the river in a very high speed. Um, so with the latest uh, camera techn technology, uh, it has been become easier to to catch them. Um, mm -hmm. So when I first got my my new camera this year, uh, uh, Nikon mirrorless. Um, I did some testing of the oh. uh, the autofocus uh, and uh of course uh, you get a lot, lot of um, missed shots uh, but sometimes you're lucky to to get the the head head sharp uh, eyes and head sharp mm -hmm. so this is a uh, adult uh, with the uh, food in its mouth uh, that it's um, been collecting for the for the young ones that's um, that is in the nest and I, I think uh, the, the nesting time is uh, quite uh, short, and they are the young ones are quickly uh, being thrown out of the nest and, and begins to to fish for themselves. Uh, so uh, for a couple of weeks, you you get the chance to to get the adults uh, flying in or in in with food. Uh, so here I am laying uh, at my local local river and. Um, there was a nesting site uh, under a bridge, and uh, the two parents uh, came, uh, yeah, regularly in with uh, food in its uh, in its beak. Um, and, uh, yeah, re really fun bird to to work with. Um, and um, you guys, uh, of course, has. Uh, uh, many uh, more species of uh, snakes than we do <laughs> this is the only uh, this is the only poisonous one in norway the the okay. adder um, and springtime also is of course when these guys uh, came come out from hibernation and uh, starts to to warm up uh, in the spring sun uh, mm -hmm. i'm not that uh, uh, interested in touching them <laughs> So, so, and, and you shouldn't, uh, of course, either because they they they, uh, they are protected, and you shouldn't uh, disturb them. Um, but it's really f fun to get uh, real close with them. With uh, uh, sometimes I've I've used macro lenses. Here I am with uh, seventy to two hundred, um, and this is very early in the season, so they are quite slow and uh, somewhat manageable. And this one is, uh, I think it's right before uh, molting because you can see the, the blue sheen on, in, on its eyes. So I think it's uh, just about to, to molt and, and uh, shed its skin. Uh, it's uh, another picture of the same snake here. Um, 
uh, and this is a spe species I, 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 tend, uh, I plan to, to work uh, a bit more with, uh, just scouting out some areas that, uh, that can be uh, promising. Um, and, and maybe some wide angle shots uh, to, to show a bit more of the habitat uh, could be uh, fun to, tr to try. Um, so, so that's the that's plan for next, next spring. Okay. Yeah, we have come to the summer, and yeah, uh, please uh, say if I need to, to speed up. I have <laughs> I have some main no interest left. I can see. Um, yeah, and and uh, yeah, of course, small garden birds is uh, yeah. Uh, in in uh, just. Back garden, we had, of course, the the, the COVID. Uh, this is from last summer, so we had to do something. Um, I spent a lot of time uh, feeding uh, garden birds. Um, also, the Eurasian jay and 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 uh, morning light. Um, but uh, yeah, and the Eur Eurasian jay is also. Um, one of the favorite uh, birds that the sparrowhawk uh, tends to to hunt on, and this is probably my my favorite bird to to photograph the, the sparrowhawk. Um, I've uh, this shot is from an uh, area where they nested, and they had, I think, between four and five chicks. And this is a young one. Uh, you can see it. It has the the adult uh, plumage, uh, so it's quite late in the year. Um, but it's uh, a, a, yeah, flock of siblings, um, just learning how to become uh, sparrowhawks. So they they uh, often landed uh, side by side each other, and and uh, was. Uh, Checking out every surrounding, um, yeah, uh, they they uh, learned how to fly. They, uh, yeah, so so uh, when st staying outside inside a, a hide, you could really get to see their natural behavior and the, the chicks growing up and, and learning how to how to uh, learning to hunt uh, from the parents. Um, the parents also uh, came in with uh, with the prey to them. So this is uh, probably the female, I think, uh, with a small bird uh, uh, in its uh, in its claw. There, I, it's, yeah, it's a very grey and anonymous bird, but uh, it has a prey in there. And also here, here I have um, prepared um, a landing site for them. Uh, and cleared the uh, cleared the background a bit, and that's uh, that's a good tip if you see uh, uh, like this, uh, they tend to land on the same place every time. Uh, and from my angle inside the tent, I, I noticed there was some uh, bushes and a grass be behind it, so I I cleared a bit of that way to get a cleaner background, so I could get a yeah somewhat uh, more. Uh, uh, yeah, beautiful background on, on the pictures. Um, and I think that is uh, also a key part to getting a good image is to visualize the scene beforehand and make some preparations to, yeah, how, how should you prepare the scene and where does the light hit? Yeah, stuff like that. So uh, here I have done some preparation and uh, but, but still they, they use their their uh, regular site to land on. Um, so so I, I've spent a lot of hours with with the sparrowhawks in the forest. Um, yeah. And also um, in the same forest, we have uh, the squirrels. Uh, here's an evening and you can see the, the evening light is coming uh, through the canopy, um, mm -hmm. making a 
a backlight uh, backlit uh, squirrel and I've also tried a bit of um, artificial lights uh, here's a flash gun that I've uh, put on the ground it was a very gray and dark uh, day so I had to use some some artificial light to to, to capture um, and it suddenly began began to to rain, and that's all the droplets you see in the on the frame, and that's uh, yeah, that's raindrops uh, illuminated by the the flash gun. Um, so, what also, will be the temperature during the summer? Can, can you repeat? What would be the temperature during the summer seasons? I'm, uh, I, I didn't. I don't think I the, got the question. Uh, the the usual temperature, how how it is. Oh, yeah, during temperature. The yeah. Uh, so the Norwegian summer is all, everything between ten degrees to thirty degrees. <laughs> um, okay. So so uh, yeah. This year we had uh, we had some warm days. We had uh, yeah. Uh, a couple of days with uh, above 25 um but the, i think the usual uh somewhere somewhere around 20 i would say is the typical norwegian summer temperature okay uh, yeah and and, and this you, this you can see has uh, the typical summer fur with the uh, not so much uh, yeah uh, fur on it on it uh, ears yeah and and how many months does it last the, the summer season yeah so if you say uh, it's uh, yeah we can we say that june july and august is the summer months okay yeah and when it yeah. uh yeah of course you can get warm days in in september as well uh, but then uh, the 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 autumn kicks in and september october okay thank you mm. Continuing with the squirrels, oh. I, I've had the uh, project this uh, this couple of months, uh, last couple of months, with the, to get some jumping shots of them. Yeah. And here my technique was to, uh, you, you have to uh, learn them how to get the food. So I placed out some hazelnuts for them. They really love them. Mm -hmm. um, so I started out with... Uh, placing one stick that, that they could climb up to. And once they reached the top, they could see the other stick with the food on it. Okay. Um, but I made sure that where the food was, they couldn't be able to climb up. So they had a barrier, uh, like a bucket around it. And so they couldn't climb up just to take the food. They had to make the jump. So I started up, uh, started with a short distance and just increased it uh, day by day as the time went by. And okay. in the end, they, they easily can jump uh, two meters. Um, and that gives you a, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah uh, uh, time enough to, to, to uh, predict gotcha. where they come and, and to, to freeze the, uh, the action. Oh, okay. uh, but, but here again, I'm using manual uh, focus, just uh, setting the focus uh, to somewhere around the middle of the jump. Okay. And um, and using, I think, 20 frames per second uh, on, on the camera to, uh, and then you get one, maybe two sharp images. Um, so it's a lot of <laughs> images that, <are, laughs> that need to be deleted afterwards. Um, yeah. And each jump is different. So they have different oh. positions on each jump. Uh, uh -huh. And it's quite nice to, to see how they can maneuver and, and uh, by using the tail. And they're very uh, good at calculating distances. And uh, yeah. they, know that they know exactly how, how to make the jump. Uh -huh. they, they never miss. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also uh, in this forest, uh, where is yeah, it's just uh, five to ten minutes uh, from where I live. Um, 
I have also photographed the pine marten. Um, this is a predator that, uh, yeah, it hunts for red squirrels, uh, but most of the time, I think it's uh, its main source of food is uh, eggs, um, yeah, birds' eggs and uh, berries and uh, yeah, but uh, and, and uh, of of course mice as well. Um, but um, this is one of the smaller predators predators in in Norway, and um, I first got to see this specimen in. Yeah, I think, yeah, May 2020, so two years ago, uh, a bit over two, two years ago. Um, here I have used uh, a camera trap uh, with uh, uh, sensors that, um, yeah, sees movement and trigger the camera. So mm -hmm. and, and that's a bit of, uh, that's another type of photography that um i've uh, I've, I've done a bit of um so you what you typically do is that you 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 uh, uh, use a wide angle lens to to get some of the scenery and some of the uh yeah uh, you also want a large depth of field to because you you have to set the focus beforehand so you never know where the animal might come. Uh, so we have to use manual focus and just guess, okay, uh, around here somewhere, the, the animal will, will come. And uh, here I have used an f-stop of 10 to, to be able to have that uh, large step to field. Um, and on this log, I, I saw some scratch marks, and uh, I think I saw some droppings as well from from the pine marten. So I knew that mm -hmm. this is somewhere he likes to go. Um, so I, I placed my my camera inside a watertight, uh, like a pelly case, uh, with a hole out for for the lens, and I've yeah. used two flashes uh, that's um, that's lit. Um, yeah, about 45 degrees on. So one front light and one fill light uh, okay. from, from the side. Yeah. And then, then, then it's just a waiting game. So you have to uh, maybe put out a bit of food to, to lure them in. Uh, and uh, this is a pr primarily a nocturnal animal. So it, it yeah, it prefers to, to be out at night. So for photographing it from yeah on a regular um yeah with daylight this is quite difficult um and this is another scene with the same uh, same specimen um they're quite uh intrigued by sounds noises uh smells and they often uh, used uh, used to go out on uh on, on two legs to see what's going on and I think this was a, a bit of a bit funny picture because it's almost looks like it's it's got a mask on. Yeah, looks like a small <laughs> criminal. Um, yeah, but it's one of my favorite uh, subjects to to work with uh, because it's very uh, il elusive. You don't yeah. get to see it very often, um, and and, uh, and camera trapping is. 95 percent preparations and five percent luck i think uh, <laughs> you, you have to really uh, uh, get your settings uh, correctly uh, you don't know when when the animal is going to show up uh, so yeah. the, the, you have to use um, yeah i think i often use uh, auto iso to be able to uh, to adjust the uh, amount of light, and I I often set my shutter speed and uh, f-stop manually. Okay. Uh, and this is uh, I th I see from the camera model. I think this was shot on a Nikon D three thousand two hundred. So oh. this is one of my earliest uh, camera trapping shots. I think. Okay. Um, and is this using the same sensor? 
I think this space. is. I think this is. Yeah, uh, it's using the same uh, infrared trigger. Uh, okay. I, I've used two different systems. Uh, one from uh, contraptions. Yeah. Uh, that's a passive infrared. So uh, it, that that sensor just scans the area uh, when it sees a movement or or ch change in temperature. Uh, yeah. It, uh, it triggers the camera. And I've also used a system from uh, Cognosys uh, that mm -hmm. is an active um, active infrared sensor. And the difference is that the active sensor is a beam. Uh, a sh uh, imagine a laser beam from point A to point B. If something crosses that and breaks the the uh, the beam, it triggers. Okay. So um, and. and those those uh, sensors have different use cases. I think uh, if you don't know where the animals is coming, it can appear from anywhere. I would say that uh, that um, a passive uh, infrared uh, system is uh, is uh, quite uh, usable. But if you want your animal to maybe uh, you only want your camera to to shoot when it's exactly at one specific spot. Than, than using an uh, active system with a specific uh, beam of, uh, of, of uh, light is, um, of course, much easier because you can you can determine where you want your shot to be. Okay. Um, but I've used both th systems with uh, with uh, with the Pied Martin. Okay. Oh. Yeah, th Amazing. this is uh, this is a bit of <laughs> uh, evolving. Uh, yeah, so so uh, here I have gotten the kind of shots uh, you you expect with the front light, and uh, so I I went on to try to make it just a diff different kind of scene. Um, this is backlit with two flashes and uh, with a longer shutter speed to be able to get some of the night sky uh, and it's a little small detail it's also ha has a tongue uh, tongue sticking out uh, yeah. so you get a little bit of red uh, inside there <laughs> as well um, and this summer is uh, the first year I have been able to sit in my hide myself and having them come uh, outside the height okay. um, because they are really, um, um, as I said, they're really elusive. They are shy of people. They have a great sense of smell, and so they can smell you from a very large distance. Mm -hmm. um, so um, but over time, as you as you spend time in the area, I think they are getting used to the smell of, of you. Um, okay. And and then uh, if you don't make uh, make any sounds and with a with the newer cameras that's uh, that, that is uh, totally silent, uh, you can uh, you can uh, easier get shots like this than you could before, I think. Um, but it took a long time before uh, the first one showed up and um, mm -hmm. They are just uh, quick in and quick out. They never spend very much time on this on the on the site, so you have to maybe spend uh, yeah somewhere between six and ten hours maybe, and you get yeah. maybe one minute of Pine Martin. <laughs> so so it's <laughs> it, it, you have to be patient and you get not don't get many many chances. Um, yeah. but I worked with, uh, with this project, uh, this, uh, spring and summer and has, uh, and have got, uh, several nice shots of them. Um, so, so it's a very fun, fun species to, to work with. And, um, yeah. And another, uh, project that, uh, that is in the area, um, I have a friend that, um, have been following the the eagle owls for many years and this is the biggest owl yeah, as i think you know um so we have a nesting uh, couple uh, in yeah yeah 
just uh, uh, yeah in the near area where I, li I live and these uh, these owls has been nesting the, on the same site for for many years and uh, we, we've been lucky enough to to photograph them and also these are mostly nocturnal uh, so they only come out uh, late evening um, but here in Norway in the earlier part of the summer so late May and early June we have uh, long nights so so we we get uh, uh, we get long nights to to photograph him um, I can't remember exactly what time it is here but I think it's somewhere between 9 and 10 p.m. Um, so, so we uh, we still had a decent amount of light. Uh, here I think it's a bit later in the evening. Um, you can see uh, the the cooler colors uh, of the uh, yeah of the uh, yeah an ISO ten thousand here. Uh, and that's uh, it's a very fascinating bird. It uh, yeah, if, if, of course it's really big uh, and. Uh, but you don't hear it coming. Uh, it's completely silent. Um, oh, okay. You you can uh, sit five meters from it and you don't hear it's coming. Oh, uh, it's uh, yeah, silent. Um, so I've been uh, been taking some uh, shots um, of the eagle owl this year as well. Here's uh, from a late evening in. Yeah, I think it was uh, beginning of July. The sun has, uh, yeah, it is set behind the mountain there, and it's the it's the very last uh, bit of light that evening. Um, and another flight shot of it uh, wow. coming down for the for the prey uh, with a golden evening uh, sky in the background. Yeah, it's a it's a majestic bird, of course. Um, it is. So sadly, we don't have that mm, much uh, var variety of uh, owls in my area. We have the eagle owl and the tawny owl, and um, the pygmy owl, and yeah, and some short-eared owls uh, during some parts of the the coast. Uh, okay. But of course, they, they are difficult to find, uh, as you know. Um, so, so having to spend time with the eagle owls has been a very very fun. Um, the last season I want to to share a bit of uh, photos from is the the autumn, and of course the the colors is um, is much more vivid in the autumn. Um, I mentioned we had uh, sandy beaches um, yeah. along the shore, and uh, this is from one of the beaches where. Uh, I think it's a sanderling. Um, I think it's the right English name for it. Uh, it's hunting for small uh, crayfish or crabs or something on, on the beach. Um, so, so for me, it's a 20 minute drive and we have long sandy beaches and uh, uh, yeah, uh, facing the, the sunset. So, so we, get, uh, we get some very nice light there in the evenings. And these birds are, are uh, migrational birds that come from the northern areas um, and make their stop uh, along the migration. So they are just here for a short time in the yeah late summer, early early autumn. Uh, Is that the sandpaper? I think it's called uh, sanderling. Um, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, but it's. Uh, maybe another name for it is sandpiper i don't okay don't, maybe yeah I'm not exactly sure um yeah uh here it's uh I, this is probably a plover is that the english name for it yeah yeah, yeah. yes yes mm -hmm. yeah uh against the uh, yeah, I, I really like to to uh, shoot against the light for these birds uh, to emphasize the the rim light. Uh, you get some nice um, bouquet of the uh, 
of the uh, area uh, around it. Um, yeah, and here you don't need any kind of camouflage. Uh, you, if you just lay still, the birds will come right up close to, close to you. Um, and as a bonus, on on some of the nights you you uh, get some uh, yeah uh, rare birds visiting, uh -huh. and also you you have the peregrine falcon uh, hunting for these uh, shorebirds uh, in the area. So so you can get. Um, some action shots uh, as well if you uh, primarily uh, daytime uh, with the falcon is, is hunting for them okay yeah so 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 spending time on the beach is uh, for me it's it's evenings in the autumn that's that's my uh, beach life i i don't visit the beach elsewhere and, and other times but uh, to to see the birds is uh, very nice to to have them so accessible yeah we we have a confirmation on that bird it's a sanderling as you yeah, said okay yeah yeah and uh yeah back to my favorite bird the sparrowhawk um huh. this is from my my good friends Hyde um, in the southern part of norway um he has made a really nice uh he, he has some um, uh, you see the the heather, uh, the purple heather, uh, and you had some uh, young uh, birch trees making this uh, this uh, blue and orange uh, foreground. Um, I just thought it was a nice frame around the bird. Um, yeah, and this is uh, probably uh, a bit atypical uh, shot of the. Often you you want to get really close with a 500 and 600 millimeter lens, um, but sometimes it can be very nice to have a bit of the surrounding and, and habitats around around as well. True, true. Yeah. Um, a couple of photos from my my own height I built, um, and I have some uh, relatives um, that has a farm area. And I noticed uh, that uh, there was sparrowhawks uh, chasing the the magpies and and crows in the area, so I I asked nicely to to put up a height and um, uh, and I found myself a spot that's on the on top of a hill, and you have some really long distance to the to the um, uh, background. So uh, you you have possibility to get some really blurred out background and, um, and uh, yeah, and, and uh, birds in flight is of course um, something I really enjoy doing. Uh, mm -hmm. On sparrowhawks, it's uh, difficult because they are really really fast. They yeah. uh, they can achieve speeds of I think. It, yeah up to 50 kilometers an hour so when they hunt it goes really fast uh, but with some training and proper te technique you can be able to follow them for a while um yeah and uh, in the autumn as, as i said uh, the colors really turns yeah uh, to to more orange and yellow um and i much prefer that uh, than to green fresh leaves um, and the, the autumn is also the time of year that uh, the sparrowhawk visits this area to 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 hunt um, i'm not sure that they hunt for magpies for food and i i don't think so i think it's more like um practice um for they they don't usually uh, take on such big birds as magpies and crows and, and jays, um, but it's also a very fun, <laughs> fun scene to, to witness. So here's a shot from uh, from another hide uh, uh, from south of Norway, where the uh, sparrowhawk really uh, hunts for the the Eurasian jay and. The jays has so, so much expression in them. They they uh, have these, uh, yeah, uh, 
they can raise its feathers and uh, really uh, stand out. Oh. Um, yeah, but as I said, I, I don't think they used this as uh, primarily as a hunt more than yeah, maybe a practice or maybe they just are. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. But it's uh, it's a challenging uh, thing to photograph. They are quick, and uh, the technique here is often to focus on the J, and uh, because the J may be sitting there quietly, and uh, but you often you sense that the J is noticing something uh, scary is about to happen, and mm -hmm. often you see just uh, the the sparrowhawk as a um, as a lightning fast bird coming in and you just has to you just have to press away and, and fire some shots because it's over in the blink of an eye um so the uh, smart thing to do is maybe to focus on the the j and uh, be ready to to fire when the sparrow hawk is coming okay Sometimes you you can uh, get a uh, you can get a sitting sparrowhawk that rests on a stone or a branch, and you you are able to follow it a bit with uh, with the uh, with your lens. And this is from my my own hide where it's uh, hunting for and it chases uh, magpies. Um, so high shutter speed um, is required, of course. Um, and uh, here I have a bit of a challenging uh, light. As you may see, uh, the the birds are in the shadow, and you have a strong, strong sun in the background. Uh, so a bit of tweaking in, in Lightroom is uh, is often required to to have the details uh, coming through. Um, and also, you can get some uh, nice portraits as, as well. Uh, they don't uh, usually s sit still for very long. Uh, they are very active um, with hunting and often use uh, taller trees and to, to camouflage themselves. And often they just do one or two swoops across and uh, that's it. So very rarely do they sit still on a perch like this. Um, I'm going to, to end off with uh, some more Martin shots. And this is um, this is another specimen than the one we saw earlier, and this is used. Okay. Um, this is uh, you, you can see it's a bit more fluffy, uh, so it has its winter coat on, a bit uh, thicker in the coat. Mm -hmm. uh, this is I think in April. March or April, and I'm using here um, artificial light, uh, like uh, two um, solid lights uh, that lasts about uh, three or four hours. Um, and I just lit the scene and uh, was uh, patiently waiting uh, for it to come to come down. And uh, I put on put out some uh, sweet foods, and they uh, what I found out is they prefer. Uh, honey and uh, dried figs and uh, dried plums is uh, also good. So, so it's a bit of a sweet tooth, uh, the, the pine marten. Um, here is a, another one from my camera trap. Um, uh, I noticed they uh, they are really good climbers. They have uh, strong claws and uh, very ag agile climbers. Um, so I made uh, this uh, photo, and um, after some adjustments, I, I uh, uh, yeah uh, got a completely back black background and uh, sort of an interesting uh, position of the pine marten. The one, uh, the one photo I'm most uh, satisfied with is um, uh, this one. Um, that also captures a bit of the the background uh, as well. Uh, you get some evening mist uh, coming through, and uh, 
and um, a bit of That's a nice, a beautiful uh, picture. nice scenery. Uh, and yeah, and of course, the Pine Martin with its thick winter fur. Um, it's one of my favorite animals, and and the one that uh, my family is from this area, and they they immediately sees where it is, uh, and it's not that far from the the family farm, so it's. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I think it's an it's a, it's, a, it's a nice image that shows uh, what what lives in the the near uh, near area that we almost never see. Yes, yes, true. Yeah. Uh, so that that was my my last picture of what I wanted to to share with you, and um, I of course have many more pictures available. <laughs> website and in in my instagram so you you're more than welcome yeah. to visit that uh, as well so yeah, sure. thank you for paying attention thank you so much philip it was a very interesting uh show and uh, we have few uh, questions uh, do you do workshop for birds in norway i've not done that many workshop I've uh, I've been out with some friends uh, that are uh, even fresher than me in in this game, um, and and I do believe that sharing knowledge is a really brilliant way to to uh, yeah make friends and to to help each other out. Um, I've had some uh, some. Uh, Photographers uh, that have been lending uh, that I've lent my my heights to, um, okay. but I'm not uh, that um, um, that established yet that I I do workshops um, yet. But maybe in the future uh, that is something I may maybe do. Yeah, uh, I don't if know. So, if somebody want to uh, come and shoot, uh, can you help them out? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, no problem. And, so people can um, contact you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. And out of all the four seasons, which season do you like the most to photograph? Yeah, that's a different question. <laughs> I, I, I think there's there's things about each season that uh, is very nice, and uh, uh, of course, I I really enjoy the winter. Uh -huh. the, if, especially if you get the snow, uh, because I think that you get very clean images with the snow. You can uh -huh. get some uh, heavy snowing uh, weather that uh, really uh, adds to the image, I think. Um, and then comes the spring when you have so much more uh, wildlife to, to see and photograph. The birds are busy uh, nesting, and uh, thing starts to appear in the from the the, the winter. Um, so I would say, hmm, and the autumn <laughs> with sparrowhawks, uh, it's difficult. Um, I think I'd, I would say autumn and winter. Yeah. Yeah. Even even I like the pictures during the autumn because you get a lot of colors. Yeah, 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 and that's. Uh, that's difficult to do in the summer because in in the forest everything is green, yeah. um, and the sunlight can be very harsh. Um, uh, yeah, so that, it's difficult. But the, the yeah the uh, a beautiful autumn morning with a cold air and sunlight hitting the golden colors on the on the trees it's uh, can be really um, really nice. Uh, we have another question on uh, how do you edit your picture, post process your pictures? Yeah, so I, I shoot all my pictures in raw format and I uh, import them to Lightroom where I do some basic adjustments. Um, usually it's down to um, shadows, highlights, a bit of contrast. Um, and I often do use, uh, as you may have seen from uh, some of the pictures, the ISO tends to, to yeah. get high because of the shutter yes. speed required. required. And I, uh, I often use uh, Topaz denoise to, to take some of the noise away. 
Um, yeah, so that's mainly my, my workflow. And I have to emphasize that I also do backups of the photos. I store them on a, on a RAID hard drive disk that then gets backed up to another RAID hard drive and then it mm -hmm. got, go, goes to the cloud as well. So I think okay. that um, because you spend so much time acquiring yes. knowledge, you are right. spending much time in the nature. And when you finally get the picture, the, the very last thing you need is for a hard drive to fail. So I, yeah. I believe in, in having double and triple backup um, because it's, yeah, it's so, so frustrating to lose images when you've spent so much sure. time on them. Yeah. Is, is there any uh, specific uh, species that you want to photograph? Yeah, um, I really would like to see um, uh, the lynx, of course, um, yeah. and uh, and all the big uh, predators are, of course, the the uh, yeah. Um, it's something I think every wildlife photographer wants to yes. to see: uh, the polar bear, the 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 brown bear. Uh, wolves. Um, uh, sadly, in Norway, we uh, don't have very much of uh, the, those predators, and they are really shy. Um, I, I know that many uh, goes to Finland to photograph uh, such species, um, where they, uh, yeah, you can get them on on heights and, and mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah, but. Um, I'm a bit of a, I will take that, uh, whatever comes, uh, I think um, what these uh, past years has shown us is that you can, uh, you don't have, have to travel very far to find interesting things. Yeah. Um, uh, things in your local area can be quite exotic as, as well, um, but often you have to uh, use your imagination and, uh, and and be very patient of what you want to, to see. Uh, but on my list uh, is the lynx, um, um, the polar bear, arctic fox. I've just photographed once on, on holiday on, on Svalbard. Um, so so th there are some uh, animals that's uh, on my list. Yeah. Great. Yeah, so that's all we have the questions also for you today. And yeah. thank you so much, Philip. It was a great knowledge sharing and a lot of new species, interesting uh, talk. Thank you again. Thank you for having me and thank you for all for, for listening in. Yeah, and we'll in future we'll have a, another session on some other topic. Yeah. Looking forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Yes, so that was Philip. Amazing stand. And uh, a lot of new species, a lot of new knowledge as always. So uh, thank you all for watching the show. Uh, we'll be uh, coming back with another session next week. Till then, all of you take care. Bye-bye.